Hello and welcome to my Modern Lit Semester 1 Final. My name is Erin Marshall and I'm here to tell you about everything I've learned over the first semester of this class. Looking at the four pieces of literature that I chose, um, they mainly prove two different thesis statements. The first one being um, modern and contemporary literature has a tendency to present the world or society um, as a challenge to the integrity of the characters. The first piece of text that I'm going to talk about is Everyday Use by Alice Walker. Everyday Use is a short story that is about a girl named Dee who comes home from school um, to visit her family. Dee comes home with a new name she's calling now going by when Guru has a new boyfriend and a new perspective of her family history. Right away, as Dee starts to catch up with her family and start to have dinner, she notices a lot of handmade like family things from her ancestors. And there's a good example of this on page four. There's a quote that says, I never knew how lovely these benches are. You can feel the rump prints, she said. That's it, she said. I knew there was something I wanted to ask you if I could have. She looks at the churn and looked at it. This churn top is what I need, she said. Didn't Uncle Buddy whitt whittle it out of a tree that you all used to have? So right away, you can tell that Dee came home with this new perspective of the importance of family history. Dee then starts to look through her sister Maggie's trunk for quilts that her grandmother had made, and she asks her mother if she could have them, but her mother said no because she promised she would give them to Maggie. And then Dee got upset. She didn't think Maggie had the responsibility to handle owning the quilts. The quote on pages five and six can explain this. Maggie can't appreciate these quilts, she said. She'd probably be backward enough to put them to everyday use. They're priceless. She was saying now furiously, for she has a temper. Maggie would put them on a bed and in five years they'd be rags, less than that. The purpose of this argument was so that Dee could teach her family about how important that family history and culture should be to people, but she was a little bit aggressive, but that's how she is, that's her integrity. Dee is living in two different worlds. While she's away at school, she's in one world and she obviously loves it. She's learning so many new things. Then she came back to her home world where things were completely different. Dee thought that she would come home and her family would love the things that she's telling them, but it didn't really work out that way for her. And they were kind of just questioning her because she wants everything now and they don't think that she should have everything. Dee's mom is now challenging her and Dee wants to be strong and keep fighting for herself, but her mom thought the same way. So Dee ended up stepping down from the argument and she wasn't really happy about it. Even though she's just trying to have a teaching moment. The second piece of text where the world challenges the integrity of the characters is the kite runner. Amir and Hassan were really good friends as children, but Amir was not the greatest friend to Hassan at times. Um, Amir acted as if they were best friends a lot. When they were alone, it was great. They were great together, but in public, Amir treated him a lot differently. There's a quote in chapter seven regarding what is going through Amir's head during Hassan's rape. I actually aspired to cowardice because the alternative, the real reason I was running was that Asef was right. Nothing was free in this world. Maybe Hassan was the price I had to pay, the lamb I had to slay to win Baba. Amir could have easily done something to save Hassan, but he was too afraid of what Asef would do to him. Also a reason for a lot of Amir's behavior is because of peer pressure and social constructs. Also, Hassan and his father are Hazaras, and Hazaras are not well respected in Afghanistan, and so they're very discriminated against. So Amir feels a lot of pressure to not show his true feelings for Hassan in public. Even though Amir really wants to show his love for Hassan, and he, as much as he wanted to do something about him, being raped, um, he felt like he couldn't because of the world he lives in and the amount of pressure that society puts onto him to be a certain way. 
So for my next two pieces of literature that I've chosen to analyze, my thesis statement is, it appears that modern and contemporary literature has a tendency to show characters that exhibit a darker and more lurid side of nature. I'll be discussing two Clint Smith poems, the first one being What the Window Said to the Black Boy. A little quote is, when someone breaks me, they call it a crime. They call it property damage. When someone breaks you, they call it inevitable. They call it Wednesday. My second poem is for the boys who never learn how to swim. A little quote from that is, I didn't know why they grabbed him like he wasn't somebody's child, like soft fruit ready to be dropped from the top of the roof. A common theme that's used in the majority of Clint Smith's poems is the highlighting of black people. And he uses a lot of brutal language and words that alienate and target them and kind of put them in the dark. These two poems have a similar theme as well, which is comparing um, black people to inanimate objects like a window or a piece of fruit. And what he's trying to do here is make it more clear to the readers that a lot of people don't consider black people as um, real people and how easy it is for people to treat them badly without even realizing it. So, working so hard over the course of the semester, I have come to the conclusion that pieces of literature and text can be so different from each other, but if you look deep enough, you can find commonalities between pretty much anything. Thanks for watching!